Hello guys, I am Sudarshan Koirala and welcome back to Data Science Basics. This is the continuation video of how we can create virtual environments in Python. This video is about poetry. In this video, I will show you how you can install poetry in your system, how you can create the virtual environment, how you can update the packages as well as poetry itself and later show you how you can uninstall Poetry from, from your system. Let's get started. Before using Poetry, let's first understand what it is. I am on the official website and here they are saying that Poetry is a tool for dependency management and packaging in Python. It allows you to declare the libraries your project depends on and it will manage, install and update them for you. Poetry offers a lock file to ensure repeatable installs and can build your project for distribution. First, let's go and install. But before that, you need to make sure that you have Poetry requires Python 3.7 plus. If you don't have the Python version later than or equals to 3.7, you need to go with other virtual environments, which I have covered in this channel. But if you have 3.7 or plus, we can proceed for me i can just go here and check first if i have the right python version i have 3.10.4 i am ready to go the documentation is actually clear you can just follow along with this here it says installation and you can install this with official installer or you can install with ppx you can install manually or and also there is ci recommendation but let's go with the official installer. I find this easier and they also recommend this way to proceed. First, we need to install the poetry. It's the same command actually for all the different OS, Linux, Mac OS and Windows WSL. We can just copy this command. And here they say that on some systems, Python may still refer to Python 2 instead of 3. That's the reason we always suggest Python 3 binary to avoid the ambiguity. Let's go to the terminal and paste what we just copied, Control V and run the command. It is going to say, okay, welcome to Poetry. This will download and install the latest version of Poetry. And it is actually uh, saying something that it will add the Poetry command to Poetry's bin directory located at uh, home query space dot bin dot local. So, now it is actually installing the Poetry and 1.4.2 version. It says that, okay, Poetry is installed now. Great. We can just look and check if it is installed or not. If we just run what it is mentioned there. So Poetry version and we have Poetry. This is that simple to install Poetry in your system. In this video, we will create two scenarios. One scenario is that we will create a new Poetry project for us. And the next scenario will be that suppose you are already working on some project and you want to introduce poetry in that project, right? These are the common scenarios that we face daily. Okay, now let's go with the first scenario that we will create a new poetry project. For that, what we can type is poetry new and we can give the name of the folder. Let's say poetry YT for now. So if I run this, it is say that it created the package poetry yt in poetry yt right if you see here there is a new folder being created if i open the folder now you can already see there is a readme file there is a byproject.toml file and there is test and there is a folder called poetry yt you can see it's already being created there and now if i go inside the project let's say it is poetry yt how do I know that the virtual environment is being created? Because I don't see anything here. And this main is shown here because I'm using the GitHub code space. This is just their way of showing that there is main, but it does not say that I am inside the virtual environment, at least for me now. If I run poetry env list, and if you run the command, it will, there is no poetry or, or virtual environments being created for us, right? As you can see right now, there is no virtual environments being created because it is just creating a project for us. Once we start building something on top of this, 
it will start creating the virtual environment. We installed poetry, but now what we can do is we can say poetry that let's use Python 3 to create the virtual environment, right? That is, if we do that, then it will create a virtual environment for us. What we can do here is we can run poetry, env, and use, and if we say Python 3, now if we run this, it says here that it is creating the virtual environment and it is giving the path for us. And it says using the virtual environment. Now if I run the previous command, poetry env list, now you see that it's activated and the virtual environment is created for us. For packages we install now, will be installed on top of that virtual environment. This is really good because if you go outside the folder, it will deactivate automatically. Let's 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 see how it works. Now I'm inside the poetry yt folder. If I go one step back, now I'm not in that folder where I run the poetry env use python3, right? Now if I do poetry env list, it will say that poetry could not find a pipe project toml file. So this is that simple. Now if I go inside the poetry yt and if I again run the poetry env list, you see that the virtual environment is created. This is really good because in all the other virtual environment creation, we need to activate the virtual environment, right? But for poetry, if you go inside the folder where the virtual environment is being created, it is automatically activated for us. Now let's go and add some of the packages on top of this virtual environment. But before adding the new packages, let's go and see what does the project.toml file consist. As you can see here, it creates this template for us already when we use the first command for us when it creates the virtual environment. It has the name, version, description and all these things. You can just go here and add the description you want. And it says that we need Python 3.10, that is the poetry dependencies. And here it says the build system is we need poetry core. And there is the build backend mentioned already here. This is already being created for us. Let's add one package. Let's just add poetry add request. This is going to add the request package for us. As you can see, it says that it's using version 2.282 for request and writing the log file and package operations 5 install 0 update 0 removes it actually shows all the things that it goes when it adds that particular package and if you notice happened something here on the tool.project dependencies the new package is being added here and if you also notice there is this log file being created for us and all the things are in this log file just in simple terms, what is log file? Let's say that you give this project to some of your friend and if you also see this log file, all the things that is going to be installed will be referred to that log file. And all the, all the versions will be taken from that log file. And if that log file is not present, then it will refer to this toml file to install the dependencies. Now let's say that you want to update the packages that you have installed. Let's say now we just have the request package here, but let's say that you have lots of packages, but how can you update those packages? If you want to update particular package, you, it can, you can just run poetry update and the name of the package, update the request and all its dependencies. As you can see here, it says updated dependencies, writing a log file and removing numpy because I had installed numpy before just to test and I, I removed it from the toml file and it removed here already without mentioning because it needs to update the log file. And if you need to update all the packages at once, you can just pass poetry and update. It will install or update all the Python packages. And now one more thing and interesting part here is because when you are developing something, you need to run something locally and you need to run something on the production, right? How can you differentiate with the package? Because in, instead of 
throwing all the packages in the production you want to restrict some of the package which you perform only locally or in the development environment so for that actually there is a command called poetry add and then you can add the package let's say i can say numpy and if i pass dev then it will just install the package locally okay it says that dev is deprecated use the group dev okay fine notation instead and now it is using the version this for numpy and it is writing into the log file and also installing and one thing as you noticed here it creates this line of code here which says tool poetry group dev dependencies and it creates the particular version of numpy there meaning that we can just use this numpy for our development environment and restrict that in the ci cd in the production environment and one more good command is what what if we just want to know the version of the package installed right we can just type poetry show and the name of the package it will show the name version and the description now one thing what i want to show here is now i have this poetry.toml file now let me remove this poetry.log file delete permanently i can delete this now there is no log file right what you can do now is you can just give this particular command to your friend and they want to install the packages what is the command that they need to install let's simulate the same environment now i can do clear and if i run poetry en if i run poetry numpy now it is not showing us because we there is the error poetry.log not found poet run poetry log to create it right but to create that we can run the poetry log of course but the one command that you can run is if you run poetry install what this is going to do is as you can see here it says updating dependencies resolving the dependencies writing the log file no dependencies to install or update installing the current project uh, this one here it creates the log file for us now if i run poetry uh, show numpy it is going to show the numpy version for us that is the two distinction there if you have something or the log file or if you don't have the log file now let's simulate the next one which i say that you are already working on a project and you want to initialize the poetry in that project right for that what i did is i created a new folder called test here and then i created a file hello.py in the file i just named paint hello world how can i actually initialize the poetry in this particular project i already did here but what you can run is you can just write poetry in it and follow what it says in the terminal if i run poetry env list it is not showing anything as i said before you need to do something here right if i run something on the command let's say i just want to run something poetry env use python 3 and if i run the command it is creating the virtual environment and it, as you can see here it is created the virtual environment and if i now again run poetry env list it will show a different virtual environment now being created and by the way one main command for you let's say that you want to know what all the different commands does poetry has you can just run poetry on the terminal and it will provide you the list of all the available commands we just went through some of those which is crucial just to create the virtual environment and doing some minor stuffs but you can see there are many other things that we can create using poetry you can just type poetry and everything is displayed for you if you just want to see all the virtual environments being created as you can see here this is the path you can just copy this path and go inside the particular folder and if you do alias you can see that there is two different virtual environments one i created with the poetry dash yt which is the first project and now this is the test the second project this is how you can quickly isolate different projects and poetry takes good care of those because once you get out of that particular folder that particular virtual environment is being deactivated that is really good because in some cases you are working with different projects 
and you are switching between different projects. But if you are using other tools like virtual ENV or BENV module or Conda for installing or activating the virtual environment, you need to deactivate and again activate and all these things. But poetry makes your life a lot easier. Now the last command, let's say that we want to uninstall poetry from our system. If we go to the official documentation, here it, it says, okay, how to install the poetry. And if you scroll down, add poetry to your path and all these things and use poetry. We already did this. And if you want to update the poetry itself, you can write poetry self update, right? You can follow all the different things here, but here is on install poetry. There are different ways how you can do this, but I will just copy the first command here. I will just copy the command and if I go on the terminal and if I paste this and run the command, it is going to remove poetry. Now if I do poetry dash dash version, it is not there. Yeah, this is all for this video. In this video, we learned how to install poetry, how to create a new project out of poetry, add dependencies or packages and then update the packages, how we can initialize poetry on the existing projects and also how we can uninstall poetry from your system. I hope you like this video. Although this is quite lonely video, I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.